this is Wendy Haney and today I'm going to show you how to use two pieces of fabric and very quickly make eight half square triangles all the same size. The biggest thing you need to know is the secret formula. Yep, you just start with the size, the finished size of the triangle that you want. So I want a finished size of a three inch half square triangle. You're going to multiply that by two. So now we've got six. 3 times 2 is 6, and then we're going to add an inch and 3 quarters. So 6 plus an inch and 3 quarters is a 7 and 3 quarters inch square. So I will take a photo of that. There you have it there. I will take a photo of that and we'll get it posted in the corner. <laughs> so I have my two squares that are going to be my half square triangles that have been cut 7 and 3 quarters inches. And because I have a nice pink light marker, I'm going to use the green. So on the back of the green triangle, we're going to mark an X on the back of it. So, and the thing is, when marking, best thing to do is get as fine of a marker as you can, because that will give you the most accuracy, obviously. So here's my center one, and here's where I really, really love my swivel cutter. So now we're going to do the other mark. X marks the spot. I hold it down pretty firmly and the biggest thing is so I don't get the ends to get wonky on me. There we go. I have an X on my triangle. Now, some people prefer marking where they're going to stitch instead. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make stitches on opposite sides of the line, a quarter inch on each side. So if you're a person that would rather have the lines where you stitch, then just create, use your ruler and add a half an inch stitch line on either side. But I have this wonderful little foot on my sewing machine that has a little quarter inch guide which is absolutely fantastic for doing these kind of squares because I just put that little guide right on my line and I'm good to go. So now <clears throat> I've got my two matching squares of seven and three quarters inches and we're going to put them together. Now, don't get too fussy. If they don't match exactly, you're okay. And we've all had that happen, right? But Ah, that'll be pretty close. <clears throat> the cool thing to note with this is when we get this all done and cut, the cut squares are not going to be exactly three inches. In fact, they're going to be three and a half inches, which means you've got plenty of room for straightening, tweaking, making sure you've got it right. Yep, you're going to go, wow, that's, that's a half inch wasted on every triangle. Okay, yep, I, I get it, but think about it. A little bit of waste versus knowing that you can square up those triangles exactly the way you need and the fact that this is really fast to make eight triangles. I am a pinner because my sewing machine's over there. So I'm going to just pin the middle of each side to keep them together and I'm going to go over to my sewing machine. Stay right there. I'll be right back. I'm back. All right. What I did was I took the pinned fabric and it's actually easier to see on the other side is we had the white lines that we marked and then I took a, four, a quarter of an inch on either side of my lines. So essentially easier to see on that side, we have four lines. Now we cut. So I'll take my pins out. Okay, there we go. Get my big ruler out and I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler on the top and then get right through the bottom or the middle of my triangles. So I want my cut 
to be right through the middle of that square. There we go. And I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And I could tell you the exact measurement you want to be at something 7 8 inch. But you know what? If you just eyeball it and have your ruler straight and you cut through the middle, you're good to go. All right. There you go. And you're going, well, you did two cuts. You don't have no half square triangles yet. You're right. Now we cut on the line. Now, once you get here, if you're more comfortable taking this apart and just working with each, each of these uh, four squares separately, that works just fine. But since I have this rotating mat, it makes it really easy to just rotate it. Cut on my drawn line. Rotate it. Cut on my drawn line. And bingo. Guess what I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Half square triangles. Let's do a quick press of this one. There we go. We'll just set these aside for now. And grab a ruler. And I have a triangle that's, oh, about three and a half inches. So if I know I need a three inch one, I can just trim this baby down. I haven't done the math, but I'm actually wondering if you're working with smaller squares, if you're actually going to end up with less waste. But there you go. There's the math formula that I've found, and I'm one that when I'm working with half square triangles, I want them to be exact. And the only way I've really gotten to be exact is making them a little bigger than I need and making sure I trim them up so that way I know they're square and I know they're exactly the size I need. So there you have it. There's your eight half square triangles, pretty lickety split. Take care. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay in touch by subscribing to my new YouTube channel, Wendy J. Haney, or going over to Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash Life Fulfilled. That's my group, Life Fulfilled, where I talk about all the things that I love. Quilting, wine, wellness, books, needlework, machine embroidery. Yeah, I have a lot of things I love. You can also find my Facebook page, Wendy Haney. That one's a little more difficult to find, but you can find my mug. So there you go. Find that. Otherwise, I'm also at wendyjhaney.com. Take care, and once again, I appreciate you watching.